There have been several changes to cruising in the recent years. And while some of them have made cruising better, many of them have actually made cruising worse. In fact, cruisers recently told us the 15 things they want the cruise lines to stop doing in 2024, and we compiled them all in this video. So let's dive in. Welcome aboard cruisers, I'm Don B from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one port at a time. Now, recently we asked members of our community here on YouTube and social media and our blog, what's the one thing you want the cruise lines to stop doing in 2024? And of course, we got some great responses. Now, if you weren't able to complete our poll, don't worry, if we missed anything, let us know in the comment section what you want the cruise lines to change in 2024. And we respond to every single comment. Now, some of these answers are probably gonna surprise you. And some of them you're gonna be like, yeah, I don't want the cruise lines doing that anymore. So you might not be surprised that the number one response we got from fellow cruisers, they want the cruise lines to stop increasing cruise fares. Let's face it, prices are going up in all aspects of life and travel is no different but we've seen the cost of cruising increase quite a bit over the recent years, despite getting less as part of your cruise fare. While booking early still tends to offer the lowest fares, that doesn't mean that it isn't going to be more expensive to book a cruise than it was back before the cruise restart. And we can attest to this firsthand. Our first cruise of 2024, which is gonna be on Icon of the Seas, we booked that as soon as it was open to the general public. And we've seen the price of that cruise, which we thought was a little on the pricey side when we booked it a year in advance, more than double since our original booking. If you're planning to cruise in 2024, it is important to be on the lookout for cruise deals. And of course, if you need help saving money, check out our cruise tips playlist right here on YouTube. We have several videos with some of our expert cruise tips that will help you save money when booking your next cruise. Now, another thing many readers told us in our poll that they want the cruise lines to stop doing in 2024 is all the nickel and diving. In fact, someone on social media said it feels like flying on Spirit Airlines sometimes. Now, don't shoot the messenger here, but we can kind of see her point. More and more cruise lines are building ships where the amenities are an additional upcharge or other cruise lines have actually removed amenities that used to be complimentary and now are charging a fee for them. Now, for those who've been cruising for a while, you know there's always been some degree of upselling. We're used to crew members trying to convince travelers to purchase drink packages or to dine at a specialty restaurant, order a book a massage at the spa. Of course, we're all familiar with staff members giving away free raffle tickets in the hopes of luring you into the Effie jewelry store. However, the trend in cruising seems to be more and more upcharges. Many cruise lines now feature signature onboard amenities like Norwegian Cruise Lines Racetrack, Carnival's Bolt Roller Coaster, or Royal Caribbean's iFly Skydiving Simulator. Heck, some cruise lines now even charge for activities like mini golf. On the other side, as I mentioned, some cruise lines are now charging fees for things that were once included. For instance, Celebrity Cruises has started charging for room service. And just last year, Princess Cruises started charging cruisers to dine at its casual sit-down pizza restaurants. It will be interesting to see what the cruise lines start charging for this year. If you haven't been cruising for a while, you probably dream about going back to the cruising of yesteryear, the midnight buffets, all-you-can-eat lobster, hello chocolates, and more were some of the luxuries you could enjoy during your cruise vacation. Sadly, many of these indulgences have been eliminated from modern-day cruise ships. Well, cruisers have said enough is enough. In 2024, cruisers want the cruise lines to stop with all the cutbacks. Some of the big cutbacks that cruisers wish they could change about cruising in 2024 include reductions to the main dining room menus, reductions in stateroom service, and overall reductions in staffing. Some cruise lines like Royal Caribbean have reduced their nightly main dining room menus. Several also have eliminated lobster on formal night or now charge for additional entrees. Not to mention staffing has been cut back since the cruise restart, meaning things like twice daily stateroom service is slowly fading across the cruise industry. And with all these cutbacks, I had some cruisers asking what could the cruise lines possibly cut in 2024 to try to save more money. 
Now, another common response we got from our poll that cruisers want to see the cruise line stop doing in 2024 is raising cruise gratuities. Those are those daily service charges that almost all cruise lines now charge cruisers every single day of their cruise. Now, we're not going to debate whether or not you should pay cruise gratuities. We always recommend that you do pay these cruise gratuities and if possible, provide additional gratuities to those cruise members that go above and beyond. But either way you look at it, cruisers told us they want the cruise lines to stop jacking up the prices of these cruise gratuities, which now has become a yearly thing the cruise lines do, adding a couple extra dollars per person per night of your cruise to these daily charges. Of course, at the end of 2023, Royal Caribbean was the most recent cruise line to increase their daily service charge. Now the daily fee is $18 per person per day for guests in non-suite category staterooms. Norwegian Cruise Lines is actually some of the highest in the industry, and their gratuities are $20 per person per day for club balcony suites and below. And I get it, listen, for a family of four, that's an extra $80 a day for a seven-day cruise. You're paying some $560 in addition to the cruise fare, as well as another 18 to 20% service charge on things like beverages or specialty dining. But we're not here to debate whether it's right or wrong to pay cruise gratuities. We'll let that happen in the comment section. All we know is cruisers want an end to the increases to these service charges in 2024. If cruisers in forums and groups aren't debating cruise gratuities or whether or not a drink package is worth it, one of the most other debated topics is cruise formal night. And you guessed it, many of our readers and cruise community also had comments about formal night. Now, this took a couple different tacks. Many cruisers said they want cruise lines to stop formal nights, and I understand that. While there are other cruisers who said they want to stop the cruise lines from not enforcing the formal night dress codes on their ships. The trend in the industry over the past years has been relaxing of dress codes. Many cruise lines have shifted away from formal nights to dress your best to dress up or not nights. Some cruisers love it and some hate it. And we heard from both camps on social media. Many who love cruising hate dressing up for formal nights, whether it's because you dress up every day for work or because you simply don't want to carry around the extra luggage on vacation. Many were happy to see formal nights go. On the flip side, other cruisers who do like to dress up don't like dining with those who they consider underdressed for the occasion. While the cruise lines have suggested attire for each evening in the main dining room, Again, this is one thing we rarely see enforced. Thus, you may be wearing a cocktail dress and sitting next to someone in a t-shirt and shorts. In full disclosure, Heidi is a big fan of formal night. And yes, we do dress up when we're on longer cruises like a seven night cruise. And while we would never say you need to dress up for formal night, we do think if you prefer not to dress up, you can dine in one of the casual venues for that evening instead, and then return to the main dining room the next night when the suggested attire is different. While cruisers want to stop with all the cutbacks, they would also like the cruise lines to stop charging for very basic items. Cruisers expect certain items to be included in their cruise vacation like they are back on land. Having to pay for things like Wi-Fi, soda, or bottled water were common complaints we heard from cruisers. Unfortunately, unless you're traveling on a luxury cruise line, you will need to pay extra for these items. Disney Cruise Line is the exception, as guests can enjoy complimentary fountain soda in the buffet or on the pool deck. However, many other mainstream cruise lines charge for these basic amenities, and the cost can quickly add up. Bottled water will cost anywhere from $3 to $5 or more on most cruise lines. Of course, some cruise lines do include bottled water in their beverage packages, other cruise lines like Virgin Voyages feature water refill stations around the ship, which is perfect. All you need to do is bring a Yeti or some type of thermos and you're all set. Other cruise lines have water carafts and staterooms, which is another nice touch too. While we do tend to buy beverage packages when on a cruise, we were really surprised on some of the comments regarding drink packages we got from our fellow cruisers. And for the most part, they had to do with the drink package restriction. While it's not new, many cruisers wish that cruise lines would stop charging for drinks at their private island, particularly when you've already purchased the drink package. For instance, while Norwegian Cruise Lines drink package works at its private island at Great Steer Key, 
it does not work at its private destination of Harvest Key Belize. Things get a little muddier when you go over to the Carnival Corp. For instance, the Princess Cruises drink packages work at Princess Key, but Carnival's Cheers package does not. Additionally, guests cannot use their Holland America or Carnival drink packages when ashore at Half Moon Key. But the biggest thing cruisers want to see stop in 2024 is a need for both guests in a stateroom to purchase a drink package. We get it. If it wasn't required for both guests in the cabin to purchase, many cruisers would take advantage of this by sharing the package with members of their travel party. But what if one cruiser likes to drink, but the other member in the cabin only has a drink or two? Or what if one cruiser doesn't drink at all? While there are medical exemptions and other circumstances where the cruise line will allow one cruiser to get the alcohol package and the other to get the non-alcoholic package, this is not common practice. With the increased prices across the board, it has many cruisers rethinking if purchasing a drink package is really worth it for them. One of the top things that cruisers wish the cruise lines would stop doing is letting the chair hogs get away with taking up valuable real estate on the pool deck. If you're new to cruising, you may not be familiar with these annoying people. These are the individuals that wake up early in the morning, especially on cruise sea days, and claim several pool deck loungers with towels and personal items like bags. The annoying part is that they either don't return for hours or save seats for other family members who don't show up for hours. So when you head out to the pool deck at 8 or 9 a.m. after some breakfast, you might be surprised that there are no seats available for you to relax and enjoy the sun. The cruise lines claim they're trying to crack down on this behavior. Many cruise lines deploy staff who remove unattended items that have been left on chairs for long periods of time. It's not a perfect system, and some cruise lines do it better than others. But we've definitely seen arguments and some confrontations arise when those chair hogs do return and they see other cruisers in their seats Further, when it comes to internet connectivity, it's something we've come to take as commonplace in our daily lives. Google and social media are always at the touch of our fingers. Some airlines and hotels offer a complimentary Wi-Fi, so why doesn't cruising? Well, with the advancements in technology at sea and the addition of Starlink, let's keep our fingers crossed that this might be a possibility in the future. This brings us to another thing that cruisers want the cruise lines to improve on in 2024, and that's the onboard technology. Let's just say it needs a little bit of work. So if the cruise lines are gonna insist that cruisers use their apps or do things digitally, then cruisers want this technology to actually work appropriately. Most cruise lines offer a smartphone app, but their features do vary greatly across brands. Some cruise lines make guests more dependent on the app than others, which adds to some of that frustration we heard from our fellow cruisers. From the check-in process, the digital muster drills, to making reservations, to viewing the daily program, in lieu of delivering a paper version to your cabin, which honestly, I still like having the paper daily, don't you? To even ordering food delivered to you anywhere in the ship, these apps have many uses. And while it's great to have these features in the palm of your hand, it's also frustrating when they just don't work. If you don't have access to your dining reservations or see your shore excursions in the app, then you may have to wait in an excessive line at guest services. It also might mean that you miss out on some entertainment offerings or important announcements, which is no fun either. Several cruisers also took aim at itinerary planning across the major cruise lines. Cruisers are looking for more time in ports of call, and some of these cruisers are looking for more diverse places to visit. Looking at you, Nassau Bahamas. We think cruises are a great way to explore multiple destinations but it is true that you're usually only in a port of call for about eight to 10 hours. Several premium and luxury cruise lines have listened to this feedback and are offering extended stays and even overnight stays in popular ports of call around the world. They're also featuring more cultural immersion and shore excursions providing local connections. That way cruisers can really make more of their time ashore, even if it's for less amount of time. And with cruise lines announcing itineraries into 2025 and even 2026, we hope this trend continues. Another complaint we heard is that even though the Caribbean is the most popular cruise destination in the world, some cruisers ask, why do all the new cruise ships need to sail there? So cruise lines, take this into account when thinking about where you're going to put your new cruise ships being in 2025. Now, if you're like us, you love that new 
cruise ship smell. But you might be disappointed to learn that that ship's itinerary features destinations like Cozumel, St. Martin, or St. Thomas again. Another thing cruisers want to stop seeing in 2024 is smoking on cruise ships. If you smoke, then you probably won't like this. But for many, there's nothing worse than sitting out on your balcony, enjoying the ocean, and getting a whiff of smoke. On most major cruise lines, smoking of any kind is not allowed on cruise ship balconies. This includes cigarettes, vaping, and cannabis. However, whether smoking is allowed in casinos is still inconsistent across the industry. Some allow smoking, some have separate smoking and non-smoking sections, and others are completely smoke-free. We personally hate walking through a cruise ship atrium or even the casino itself that reeks of smoke. And the cruise lines are always trying to push the limits. Last year, while Celebrity Cruises has a smoke-free casino, they did try to introduce vaping, which, as you probably guessed it, was met by swarms of complaints by those Captain Club members. So Celebrity Cruises quickly abandoned that pilot. And as far as we know, all of their casinos now are completely smoke-free. And while the cruise line does have permitted designated smoking areas, we have seen individuals smoking where they're not supposed to, and rarely are there any consequences taking for these actions. In fact, we've seen fellow cruisers vaping in the theater or a lounge around the ship with no repercussions. So many cruisers want the cruise lines to pick up their game and to eliminate smoking or at least enforce their own rules regarding smoking in 2024. With all the technology and enhancements made at terminals and on cruise ships, in 2024, cruisers want to see the cruise lines effectively disembark and embark passengers. True, some cruise lines do it better than others, but oftentimes getting off the cruise ship on the last day of your cruise or even boarding on cruise boarding day can be chaos. On disembarkation morning, it's almost impossible to get an elevator. So many cruisers resort to carrying luggage down flights of stairs. Some pro cruisers may get lucky by hopping in an elevator going up just to ensure a spot coming back down. But even when you make it down, oftentimes you're greeted by a massive line of fellow cruisers also waiting to get off the ship. This line might wrap through the casino and halfway around the ship. And then there's cruisers cutting the line, others fretting about missing a flight, and oftentimes there are either crew members around who aren't able to help or no crew members around to try to help. Either way, there has to be a better process for getting off cruise ship. Likewise, many cruisers took aim at the embarkation process. As some pointed out, if you don't have priority status, the lines in the cruise terminal can get quite long on embarkation day. If you're relying on your digital boarding pass and the app isn't working, this can also cause further delays. Additionally, while most cruise lines start boarding around 11 or 11.30 a.m., this is not always the case. So some argued you may be stuck waiting in the crowded terminal for quite a while before you're allowed to board the ship. And then once you board the ship, you're actually stuck waiting even longer for your suitcases. This is an important tip for first time cruisers. Anything that you leave with the porters at the cruise terminal will not be delivered to your stateroom for several hours. That's why it is crucial you have all your essential items in a cruise carry-on bag on embarkation day. While cruisers had a lot of things they wanted the cruise lines to change in 2024, many individuals also took aim at their fellow passengers and pointed out there's a lot of rude behavior that seems to be on the increase since the cruise restart. Simply put, some passengers and their behaviors can really irk other guests on the ship. We're looking at all those who think they're entitled you clearly see us waiting in line. Why do you think you have the right to walk by everyone else in hopes of bypassing the line? Or how about those cruisers who complain about everything or are rude to the staff? Then there's also those who must have slept through the crash course on elevator etiquette. No one appreciates you bombarding the elevators. Lastly, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention poorly behaved children. Yes, you are on a family vacation and your kids are just having fun but this shouldn't interfere with other guests also enjoying their vacation. These were just some of the most hated behaviors mentioned by our community. If you have any others that you'd like to add to the list, 
let us know in the comment section below. Now that you know what cruisers want the cruise lines to change in 2024, we need to find you the perfect cruise ship for your next vacation. Well, lucky for you, we have our brand new best new cruise ships of the year video right here on YouTube. In that video, we showcase all the brand new cruise ships from lines like Royal Caribbean, Princess Cruises, Cunard, Disney Cruise Line, and more. That way, your next trip is smooth sailing.